Hi friends, hi friends, hi friends. You try to play metal and maybe it just sounds like this. Not ideal. That's not how you want your metal to sound, friends. So here's the thing. A lot of beginners just starting to play guitar, especially in the metal realm, you have a few kind of go-to habits because they feel better when you're just beginning, but they're not necessarily the best things to do with amps. Now here's how I'll break it down. I'm playing a solid state Marshall MG micro stack right now. It is a $300 amp. It's not fancy. It is very basic. People laugh at it all the time. I think it sounds great. You can make almost any amp sound pretty good once you know these basics. So I'm going to run down three things that pretty much any metal player needs to do to just have a good baseline tone. Now of course there's a reason Bogner costs what it costs and a reason that Mesa dual rectifiers cost what they cost and all these other high end things, especially nowadays with the digital, the Kemper, the Axe effects, everything. There's a reason it costs that much. It is better. It's way better than my MG. But my point is you can pretty much get by with anything as long as you have this kind of baseline knowledge and this foundation for setting your metal tone. So here are the top three things that you're probably doing wrong with your metal tone. Number one is just way too much gain. You just don't need that much gain on your amp. My, the first thing that I used to do when I would play guitar, when I was just getting started, every amp gain 10, crank it, whole way up. Because without it, it just felt like I couldn't play what I needed to play. Now, I'm gonna let that sound happen because you can tell the first problem with too much gain is simply the amount of noise your amp is gonna generate. This is a guitar with active pickups. All right, I want you to actually be able to hear me a little bit. <laughs> so this is a guitar with active pickups. It's actually a pretty quiet system despite the output that they put out. They're pretty quiet pickups when it comes to just feedback and that kind of hum you're hearing. The point remains, if you're using this much gain, all you're doing is creating noise that you don't need buzz, feedback, hum. You can get by with less gain and trick number two is actually going to take it to the max. Alright guys, tip number two. Tip number two is pretty much every metal guitarist out there is doing this. You may know about it, but if you're not doing it yourself, doing yourself a bit of a disservice. Make it happen. What I'm talking about right now, get an overdrive pedal, get a noise suppressor or a noise gate. That is going to solve the not enough gain thing. So what this is going to allow you to do is using an overdrive, an overdrive, get yourself an overdrive pedal, get yourself a noise gate or a noise suppressor. Those two pedals will completely change your tone for the better especially if you're playing metal. So the overdrive pedal I use is a cheap $30 maybe on Amazon Joyo overdrive pedal. So what I'm gonna do is first switch the pedals off. I'm gonna just play it straight up through the amp like this and then I'm gonna turn the pedals on, let you hear the difference. All right guys, so here it is with just no pedals at all, just straight through. <laughs> no pedals at all. What I'm going to do now is flip on the noise gate and the overdrive, let you hear the difference on that. It's got more punch, got more grit, much tighter. That's the thing about what this overdrive and noise gate setup will do. So much tighter, so much more punch. I'm sure you can hear the difference, but one thing that I think is always overlooked with this is how much different it feels. And if you play guitar, you know sometimes the feel is really what could put you over the edge. Like one amp feels better than another. It's something that you can't necessarily explain until you're playing it. But I feel so much more confident 
that what I'm trying to play is going to sound right and come out right when I use this setup. It just feels punchy and there and tight and just good. So overdrive, noise gate, kind of changes everything for your metal tone. And I'm going to show you now how to set up the overdrive. The noise gate is very straightforward. And as you can tell right now, the amp is much quieter with the noise gate anyway. I kind of just recommend noise suppression or noise gates in general if you're playing high gain stuff. It's kind of just a necessity. When you add the overdrive though, and it's still enough to totally tame the noise, so that's not a worry at all. I'm going to show you how to set up the overdrive now. There are some specifics to it. All right, guys, so this is my pedal board. This is how I have my overdrive pedal currently set up. As you can see, the gain is on, it's literally on zero. No gain, no gain at all. But the level is maxed. So this is kind of the key to this. This is how you keep it from getting noisy and just adding punch and that little extra grit and tightness that you're looking for. So you wanna max out the level or the volume on some overdrive pedals it's called. Keep the gain down to a minimum. And then you kind of just tone to taste. Like wherever you, once your tone, the more you crank this tone knob, the more it adds kind of treble and scrape and just high frequency, which I like. I, as you can see, I kind of have it around two o'clock. Sometimes I'll even go up to kind of three o'clock. I like that tone, but if you want a more kind of subdued round tone, you could put it somewhere back there. The noise gate, noise suppressor, very straightforward, especially for high gain. So I just have the threshold all the way up to the max, zero decay on reduction mode. Every noise gate pedal is gonna be a little different with the controls, but they're pretty simple to figure out. You just wanna make sure that, you know, just play around with it. Make sure that it's stopping that noise before it really gets rolling. So tip three, you've got your amp gain dialed back a little bit. You've got your overdrive pedal. You've got your noise gate. You're pretty set right now. But are you using enough mids? Are you using enough mids? <laughs> thing in the new metal scene you know in the early 2000s when new metal was everywhere is all about scooped mids scooped mids and for me that's kind of when I was starting to play so that was a tone that I was definitely drawn to but the older you get the the more you play the more experience you get the more you realize that mids are where the magic happens absolutely I would look at kind of Zach Wilde's amp setups when I was a kid when well, I'm a kid when I was just starting a teenager and he would have kind of the bass at, you know, three o'clock, mids at three o'clock, treble at three o'clock. It was like everything was just kind of past noon. And I was like, I would try it and be like, man, that just doesn't sound good. But when you add the overdrive pedal, when you've got your gain kind of clocked back, it all makes so much sense. This is the tone that you're after, I think. So I'm going to play first with very scooped mids, kind of how I would set it up when I was first starting. And then I'm going to switch it over, and, I, and I'm going to add mids to the mix, and you're going to hear the difference. So here we go with the scooped mids. And honestly, I haven't played with scooped mids in so long. Not sure how this is going to sound, so it might make me laugh a little bit, but here we go. <laughs> It's just it's just not great like it doesn't sound terrible and I'll give you that but here's here's the other thing about scooping your mids it sounds fine in your bedroom you know this doesn't sound awful in your bedroom if you go out and play with a band with a drummer with a vocalist with a bass player you tell them Babs you tell them about them mids Babs you need the, she knows I taught her right she knows if you go out and play with a band <laughs> Babs all right all right, thanks. All right. So if you go out in a full band and play with just no mid scooped out, your guitar is getting lost. You're just not hearing that guitar because that's the frequency of the guitar. That's what it fills, the mids. That's where you are as a contributing member to your band. That's what you're providing. So if you scoop the mids, you're essentially just taking your own guitar out of the equation. It makes no sense. So here we go. I'm going to add mids back in and kind of set the EQ where I would normally have it and you can hear the difference. And then at the end, I'll uh, edit something together to kind of put them side by side so you can really tell.
settings here I'll show you exactly how I have my setup right now it's obviously a Les Paul with EMG pickups it's in drop B tuning not super important any and the pickups by the way active pickups they help for sure for metal tone a little tighter a little more action but you can definitely play with passive pick and you know what here you go my other guitars are passive pickups we'll swap so here's my uh, custom Telecaster it has custom wound pickups actually as well from Joshua Hernandez that dude he's so good these pickups are just so good. Home record pickups. Check them out. All right, here, so these are passive pickups. Definitely lower output than those EMGs, but just hear the difference. And also, it's not drop B. If you thought the tuning is just what makes it sound chunky, I think this is straight up drop D. <laughs> sounds metal as hell all right so just to wrap it back up wrap it up tip one don't use too much gain don't do it noon perfect most amps overdrive setting noon perfect overdrive pedal boom showed you how to set it up they call it a clean boost if you ever hear the term clean boost that's kind of what they're referring to you got your overdrive and noise gate set up less than a hundred bucks to add that in of course you could spend as much as you want setting that up but just for a baseline foundation a hundred bucks will do you no no doubt step three mids it's all about the mids all right guys and here's my amps eq so as you can see on the overdrive setting i've got gain at about 11 o'clock volume between 9 and 10. bass is up near the max but not quite mids are around two o'clock and treble is there kind of with bass um it's crazy to me that that many mids sounds that good because when I was first starting, it would always be, this would be my setting. All the bass, oop, all the treble, but just, you don't need mids, right? And then you start playing and you're like, man, those mids, that's where it's at. And of course, every amp is gonna respond differently, EQ-wise. I've had PV5150s that I think sound best where everything's just on like six, like one o'clock for a bass, mid, and treble. My Mesa dual rectifier sounds a little different based on how you do it and its EQ is very picky. When you adjust the bass, it almost changes the mids as well. And I think I've actually read about, you know, they have some kind of active EQ or something. I think the PV Triple X might have that as well. So depending on your amp, the EQ is going to respond differently, but I can guarantee you your mids should be at noon or a little higher for your metal tone and it'll sound good. And then just adjust the bass and treble to taste. So um yeah, there you go. Mids sound great. Mids sound great for metal, even though the common misconception is that scooped mids are where it's at. It's not. Nobody likes scooped mids. Save your scoops for ice cream, kids. Actually, don't do not do that either. Diabetes. <laughs> Diabetes is worse than bad tone. Nobody wants betas. I'm telling you. My dad has it. You don't want that. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's your tips. Three tips to improve your metal tone. I hope you guys like this video. And I hope to do some more soon. I'll catch you guys later.